You know, I've always wanted to try out this car. This is the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe, but more specifically, the plug-in hybrid, which basically has almost like a small electric car in it. I need to explain, but before any of that and the review of the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe, we've got that awesome intro that I know you guys love. Oh, I love these bits. Yes guys, this is the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe. It kind of sits right in the middle on the Mercedes-Benz range, right next to the GLC SUV, which I have actually featured on my channel before. Now, it's actually a little bit smaller than, say for example, Mercedes-Benz GLE. Basically, the Coupe just means it has a slopier roofline at the very back. So we will check out the headroom and kind of boot capacity and that sort of thing, which is obviously quite important because I can imagine a few people are wanting to go for an SUV styled car to get some more space, but they don't like that kind of boxy look that they traditionally come with. So enter the coupe. Now for regular viewers of my channel, you'll know that, uh, well, when it comes to modern Mercedes, they do have all these kind of stars surrounding this big one in the middle. A lot of models do have this now, so just all about that kind of showing off and that kind of bling. But yeah, big one in the middle, loads of small stars, and there's even more down here as well. More chrome elements just kind of showing off even further. Now, one thing I do really, really like is that Mercedes-Benz do have an option for a thing called digital light on this model. So digital light is basically very, very fancy adaptive headlight system at nighttime. So they very kindly lent me a car, which I was able to check out in the dead of night. And let's just say it's some pretty cool and sophisticated tech. Now, of course, with most modern Mercedes as well, they do take aerodynamics very, very seriously. So there's lots of cutouts on the side as well, just to channel that airflow. And certainly for something like this, which is the plug-in hybrid, which I'll touch on more later, just increases that range even further. Again, we'll touch on that later. Now, when it comes to dimensions of this one, length 4769 millimeters, width 2076 millimeters, and height 1606 millimeters. So, what about the price? Well, the price of the Mercedes Benz GLC Coupe starts from £59,395. However, the model I have here, it goes up to almost £80,000. But I will explain how cool this plug in hybrid is later on the drive. So yes, this is the bit that I'm referring to that uh, GLC Coupes, I think, are kind of famous for. This kind of slopey roofline at the back. And I know it's a kind of love-hate relationship. So some people love it, some people don't like it, and just want to stick to that boxy SUV look for practicality, of course. But yes, I will check out how much... Uh, you know, rear headroom is lost and boot space uh, in just a moment. But yeah, you have to let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. SUV or Coupe? Now, for one thing, it's completely electric, which is, of course, great. It's 545 litres, as you see here, but can actually go up to 1,490 litres if you fold the seats down. Now, one thing I didn't quite actually understand is that uh, I mentioned um, a few minutes ago that this is the plug-in hybrid. Now, normally with the plug-in hybrid is you actually have less boot space, but for some reason in the Mercedes brochures, it's all the same and the floor does actually look like it is exactly the same as well. And there's uh, like a really small bit of space there, but there's no space underneath. But yeah, the boot capacity is the same for all engine variants. So I don't know how Mercedes Benz have achieved that, but hey, it's a fairly large boot. It does look like the floor's raised, but I trust you Mercedes, it, it says 545 across all of them. So we'll have to go with that one, but yeah, that's the uh, the boot. Uh, just to show you what it looks like if you fold the seats down, they go down. Well, as simple as that. So yeah, very, very easy. Of course, you can take this out as well. Unlike the GLC Coupe normally, which I think if I remember you ought to put that underneath, oh, you'd have to leave that at home, so obviously it won't fit underneath uh, in this particular one. But it does come with this nice mat, just in case it gets a bit mucky. There's a 12 volt socket here as well, just spotted and um, little storage areas on there so cool wow time to check out these rear seats and its headroom hey just a quick one guys before we jump on the inside make sure that if you're loving this video hit that subscribe button just down below i cover all sorts of brands from volkswagen to volvo tesla byd and even bmw in the past as well and of course mercedes now of course if you're loving it make sure to hit the like and drop us any comments on videos you'd like to see in the future as well right on with the tour all right guys so let's check out see what this is like 
in here. Well, actually, surprisingly, there's actually decent enough legroom considering it's the coupe as well. And oh yeah, look, the headroom. That's interesting. So the roof there is lower, but then it goes up where your head would be, where the rear passenger's heads would be. Then it goes down quite a lot at the back there, which actually makes me think that the visibility is somewhat restricted a little bit when you're looking in the rear view mirror, which I have actually noticed from driving, but this does have reversing camera, so that kind of makes up for it in parking. Let me sit back in the seat properly. I can get three, three fingers above my head. So, I mean, that's pretty good for, you know, SUV styled coupe while well, the roof kind of cuts down a bit at the back. So yeah, surprisingly, just like the Mercedes-Benz GLE Coupe, there's more room in here than it looks on the outside. Uh, for context, I have set that up for my driving position. I'm six foot two, I have very long legs and a slightly shorter body. So obviously if you do have very tall people who have like uh, maybe a slightly longer body, maybe you get them sitting back and just try it out. But uh, yeah, that is my leg room there as well. So I could move that further forward. That's just the way I've been driving in the past uh, few days or so, but yeah. That's pretty good. Usual things in there, so armrest there. Um, I didn't actually mention you can actually fold this down 40, 20, 40. So what I showed you a moment ago was the 60, 40 split, but you can do the middle one as well. And usual cup holders in the middle in there as well. Jaws and climate control in the middle there as well on this particular car. And uh, ah, there's no USB-C ports down there. It's just like a blanking plate. It might be the first car that I reviewed that doesn't have USB-C ports in the rear. I wonder why that is, that's strange, but Anyway, worth noting, but I'm presuming that there's, yeah, there's two USB-C ports there in the middle on the kind of centre armrest, but yeah, none in the rear. Well, that's a shame, but still, I mean, if I was looking at this car, that wouldn't put me off because I'd never sit in the back anyway. And if someone needs to charge their phone, then I'd just run a wire from there. So not the end of the world. It just seems strange there's no ports there, but hey-ho. Uh, storage in the uh, doors here is good as well and in terms of the actual build quality which I always like to tend to cover these days again all good nice premium materials just like the GLC SUV and the only harsh plastics are like right in the kind of center of the storage of the door like at the bottom which your hand's not going to touch anyway but yeah everything else all has this kind of like leathery squidgy feel which is nice I guess this centre panel was plastic as well, but again, that's not something your hand's really going to touch, so not the end of the world. Right, well, let's have a look at the front with um, all this tech. Right, guys, so up front, we have this awesome kind of minimalistic kind of vibe of screen placement in the middle and a touch bar along here and uh, storage, of course, in here and various different things. So we'll do a little tour in just a second. Loving the screen here, it's so easy to see everything. I mean, I use Apple CarPlay uh, mainly for myself. There's Android Auto, of course, all built in as well, as well as wireless CarPlay, so super easy, but we'll, we'll touch on more of that in a minute. You will actually note that from certain angles in the back, specifically if you're a rear passenger and you look toward the front, the screen looks a bit odd because it's not straight, but there's method in Mercedes-Benz's madness for this. It's tilted just ever so slightly toward the driver. And certainly from here, you can clearly see it's right in the middle, but it's just ever slightly tilted and it just looks perfect here. But you know, if you sat in the back, it does look like it's like tilted slightly. So uh, obviously just bear with me on that one, but from here, it looks amazing. But yes, we'll come back to that in a minute. In terms of the uh, materials used and that sort of thing, again, it's almost identical to the GLC SUV leather materials everywhere and squidgy materials the only plastic really is in again the kind of door pockets this bit feels like it's plastic i mean i wouldn't advise putting anything hard on this surface but i do quite like that kind of design on there which is quite nice better than hard gloss black anyway <laughs> so because hard gloss black just leaves marks everywhere so quick tour then shall we so in here i mentioned there were two usb-c ports so um there's that there. It's also a little storage tray as well, which I've not seen before, but um, maybe it might be useful for coins. So that's pretty good. Moving on in here, we then have uh, an extra USB-C port there with wireless charging and of course cup holders there as well. So that's nice. And this is like a soft close. You just close back up just like that. Now, one thing that I've completely forgotten to mention on a couple of Mercedes reviews I've done previously, so I do apologize. 
Uh, but Mercedes-Benz actually have, um, on some models, a dash cam built in uh, or an option to add a dash cam. So this does vary quite a bit. It basically uses the augmented uh, sat-nav kind of reality system. But just in case you don't have that, there is a 12 volt socket hidden just down there which is brilliant because if you then had a if you didn't want to use that dash cam or you didn't have it you can then put a dash cam up here and run the wire down and not have any trailing wires in the power bits here so i do quite like that that's pretty good which reminds me if you want to check out some dash cams that i reviewed have a look in the description down below or on the pop-up banner up above i have reviewed some dash cams myself very recently so um you can see which one i use on a daily basis now, just beneath the screen, I said we'll get onto the screen in a second, there's almost like this kind of touch bar to uh, control various different things from the drive mode. Uh, certainly this one, this is obviously a plug-in hybrid, as I mentioned, so that's how you control that. There's also a very sophisticated parking camera, which literally looks like this. Now, the left-hand side will look a little bit odd at the moment, just because I have um, the door open. But if I spin this round, you can see, you can even see like the car moving over there on the road. And it's so clever how it works. So you could even view the left-hand side if the door was closed or the right-hand side and see how close you are to the curb, for example. So it's such a clever camera and how that works. And there's even some settings as well where you can get the camera system to come on automatically when you approach your driveway based on GPS. So again, so clever. But yes, then there's car settings. There's also a fingerprint reader on this car as well. So you can log into the profile in here with your own settings. So that's pretty cool and quite futuristic. And then volume and mute buttons there. And then we come onto the steering wheel. Now I have this exact steering wheel. Uh, no, this has driving assistance package, which I don't have. But in terms of the design, the steering wheel is almost identical. These kind of twin spokes just going across here. Now, I have mixed feelings about the steering wheel. I love the design of it and the kind of functionality. The kind of bit that I don't like is that it is touch, but having said that, as I've mentioned in other videos, I bought my car knowing that it was a touch steering wheel. I'd rather have physical buttons, but having said that, you do get used to it after a little while and it's very easy to use. So, not the end of the world on that one. Uh, so yeah, now I think the time is to go through the multimedia system. Now Mercedes-Benz multimedia systems over the years are very, very sophisticated. They are getting so clever and uh, certainly with this one, it's like generation two. MBUX came out in like 2018, so this is like the second gen version of it. And it's very, very good. It's very easy to use. Certainly from a sat nav point of view, I do like to cover some of the basics. You type in up here where you want to go. Say you want to go to pool, for example and it will search for it and then it'll come up here let's go easy please proceed to the highlighted route and then to mute it that one and to unmute it same please button proceed to the highlighted route and finish top left it literally doesn't get easier than that for a, a certainly a car sat nav i've definitely used a few before where like the mute button is two or three clicks away whereas this is one click Again, you can't get better than that, really. Now, just in case you're not a fan of using the inbuilt multimedia system, as I mentioned, this does have Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto, both of which are wireless. So again, very easy to use. It literally prompts that as you connect your phone up for the very first time. One thing as well, the climate control is actually located on the bottom here. Uh, this is actually fixed, so it doesn't move. Yes, technically speaking, it is touch. So you do touch it on the screen but you, it's not like buried into menus. Certainly on another car that I reviewed very recently, an electric car, uh, one of its main negatives was that the climate control was buried in settings and you had to go find it. Whereas with this, for example, say you've got your climate control on like this, uh, even if you have the screen off, that climate control stays there. So you can easily adjust it. So that's good. And as well, it does have a back home button, previous and neck track button. Again, literally one click away. Now, just before we go out, there are, of course, different engines available on the GLC Coupe, and they are slightly different to the GLC SUV that I've noticed. So, for example, there's a GLC 220D. This is a 2-litre, 197 horsepower. Then there's a GLC 300D, also 2-litre, but this one puts out 269 horsepower. On the petrol front, there's a GLC 300, 2 litre, 258 horsepower. And then there's the one I have here, which is the GLC 300E, E for plug-in hybrid, 2 litre, 
204 horsepower and 136 horsepower. All these engines are 4MATIC, which is Mercedes-Benz's four-wheel drive technology, and they all have mild hybrid as well, with the exception of this one, which is the plug-in hybrid. As I said, I'll touch on that in a sec. There are also two AMG engines as well. So this is a GLC 43 with 421 horsepower and GLC 63 SE performance, 476 horsepower and 204 horsepower. Now I have actually checked out that GLC 63 SE before in the SUV format. So if you guys want to see that one, have a look in the description down below. I will uh, link that there in case you want to see that. And I warn you, it is uh, very, very fast. Right, let's take this one out. Right guys, well, as I mentioned, this is the plug-in hybrid. So into drive and away we go. Absolutely silent. Love it. I love uh, driving on electric, uh, whether it be on an electric car or even a plug-in hybrid. It's just so cool. You have the instant torque, which I will show you in a moment. We'll just get out on the uh, open road first. So I guess uh, one thing that uh, I'll cover first is, you know, what is this like to drive um, for a start? You know, ride comfort, that sort of thing. It is very, very smooth. You do notice the plug in the hybrid weight, uh, but that aside, I'll touch on the more of the hybrid stuff in a second. In terms of the actual GLC Coupe itself, it's, it's a very nice looking car. I, I really like the design of it. I know that it wouldn't be practical for many, of course, if you have like a dog or something, but I do like that kind of slopey roof SUV look, which um, a few cars out there do have. But riding around, it's very, very smooth. It's uh, very maneuverable, very nimble. And of course, uh, you just have that awesome luxury ride um, ironing out all those bumps, which is just exactly what you want. Now I said day-to-day -day driving, I do notice the weight of this plug-in hybrid ever so slightly, so you can feel it like kind of almost near the back, which is of course where the, the battery is. It's a 31.2 kilowatt hour battery to be precise. And this is what's so cool about it, is that plug-in hybrids years ago used to be well, they used to be like 7 miles, 10 miles, 15 miles, something like that. Which was cool, you know, offset some of your local driving to electric, so that's all really good. But this one can do 83 miles on electric. That's like one electric car that I've been in before, which was like the smart car you know, years and years ago. I, I didn't actually make a video on that to such, but yeah, 83 miles? That's mad. That's so much range. That's, you know, as I said, that's literally what, what an electric car, well, that's what electric cars used to be. Nissan Leafs were around that. And you can get that in a hybrid now. I mean, come on, that's, that's pretty good. That's like, I don't know when Nissan Leafs first came out. I'm sure someone could tell me in the comments or I could look it up on Google. But yeah, uh, there's horses. This is the problem. I always film cars reviews in the new forest just because it's nice and quiet but when i do the on the road bit there's always horses running in front of cars and things they do look really cute though please don't run in front of the car <laughs> right and where we go electric talk but yeah the plug-in hybrid system in this has the range of an electric car from 10 15 years ago that's cool all right, that is the best selling point about this. In fact, I even saw on the Mercedes-Benz e-brochure that they had a uh, an edition called the Urban Edition or something like that. It was like a cheaper, more entry-level version to get into a plug-in hybrid, which again, was that's very, very welcome. Now, yes, for those of you wondering, I do have a separate video on all of the different drive modes that you can do in a plug-in hybrid. In its most simplistic form, all of your local driving is going to basically switch over to electric, but then if you go any further, then it'll use the engine. Uh, but you can control all that using these modes down here. Uh, now, I won't run through those here, but what I do want to make use of is the sport mode. So we have the engine as well as the electric motor. So if you want to see a video about all the modes, um, I did actually film that in this area here, but I'll link that below in the uh, description if you want to see that. I think I filmed that in the Mercedes GLE 
which was um, very, very fast. Anyway, let's show you what this, uh, this uh, plug-in hybrid can do. It's this horrible slip road here with um, lorries speeding by and no one will let you out. In fact, we do have an opening here. Away we go. That sounds really sporty. That sounds really good. Is that using artificial sound? I don't know. That that sounded really cool. I mean, to be fair, on I, I don't know if this is using that. I, it just sound sounded too sporty for the. I don't know. I just haven't heard that sound before. That was fast, considering this car's weight as well, and you, of course you've got the battery in the back. It's that electric torque, which I just really want in my life. Hybrid or electric, you know, electric car. But this is the thing, I think this is why plug-in hybrids are probably going to sell more and more over the coming years because electric cars are just so expensive at the moment and depreciation and all that sort of stuff. Whereas if you have kind of a blend of the two, plug-in hybrid, as long as you plug it in and make use of electric, then it can certainly work out um, quite cost-effective. Some plug-in hybrids are actually the same price as petrol and diesel I've seen. Not always, but some of them. Right, let me pull over here. We'll do this again, but not in sport mode. Just see if it sounds as sporty as it did a moment ago. No, I've got to wait for a gap. Might be a while. <laughs> okay, here we go. still just sounds sporty so maybe it's not artificial sound all right i mean cool it sounds really sporty i think it's the sportiest plug-in hybrid sound i think i've heard apart from the um glc 63 se performance i mean that was a that's a different kind of plug-in hybrid they do like seven miles or whatever it is um on electric that's not like this. This is designed to make driving cheaper, whereas that one's designed to, um, well, go very fast. Well, I really like this. This is, um, uh, I've said I've always wanted to try out the plug-in hybrid in a Mercedes-Benz GLC on the new ones that are announced, because I saw those stats. and was like 80 miles on electric. That's crazy. That's mad. Well, it's everything that I thought it would be. I said I certainly wouldn't turn down this. I'd probably go the GLC SUV personally, just because um, I have a dog at home. And well, I mean, it would encourage him to lay down so he's not standing up all the time, but I like it. I need to try out some more plug-in hybrids. Well, there we go then guys, that concludes this week's video on the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe 2024. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and of course, if you liked this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and of course guys, thank you so much for watching, until next time, see you then.